have just had a joint statement from the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. It reads this. Today, President of the European Commission Ursula von der Leyen and Prime Minister of the United Kingdom Rishi Sunak agreed to continue their work in person towards shared practical solutions for the range of complex challenges around the protocol on Ireland and Northern Ireland. President von der Leyen will therefore meet with the Prime Minister in the UK tomorrow. Um, let's bring in our Deputy Political Editor, Sam Coates. Um, so, Sam, von der Leyen expected in the UK tomorrow. That's right. So this, in, this statement, interesting from two different perspectives. First of all, it looks like we are on the cusp. You don't get Ursula von der Leyen in the president of the European Commission. She's effectively head of the EU side of the negotiations in to meet Rishi Sunak until you're basically almost there. She, of course, was meant to be coming over on Saturday to, amongst other things, meet the king as well as Rishi Sunak. Uh, that didn't happen. Now it looks like she'll be over to talk to Rishi Sunak tomorrow. Could this be the moment the deal is signed, civil, uh, sealed and delivered? Very, very possibly. These two individuals will want to have, as it were, a handshake moment when the deal is finally concluded. And that could well be the purpose of that. But, but... What this statement does not say is that a deal has been done. What this statement does not say is that there is something going to Cabinet right now that's ready for Parliament to start looking at and, uh, and agreeing to tomorrow. It doesn't say we're, we're there. And that is interesting as well. Uh, it, it's fair to say, I think, that all day we've had quite a lot of back and forth. I've been speaking to sources, uh, suggesting it's more likely this evening and then more likely tomorrow. And there, there's been a little bit of, of flux in the air. It has, however, looked like actually you could get something a bit more concrete than this, which is, after all, a holding statement of sorts. Now, it might well be that they're just not ready this evening to put it to everybody. It might be that, for instance, you had big Brexiteers like Steve Baker, who's a member of the government, go in to see Number 10 uh, and possibly put the brakes on things a little bit, that Rishi Sunak just wants a bit more time either to look at the presentation or the detail before he's willing to press go on this deal. The, the, the outline of which, by the way, has been sitting on his desk for the better part of two and a half weeks. I mean, they may say there are still negotiations going on. If they are, it's a comma here and a, uh, and a, and a dotted I there. Uh, it's not the substance of the deal, which I think was sorted three weeks ago. And even now, tonight, they're not quite able uh, to say, yes, we're ready to go. We're calling the Cabinet. We're calling MPs. This is actually about to happen. It's on the run when it's going to happen tomorrow. So, so another development, but it's not quite it yet. And that in itself is interesting. OK, I just want to jump in there, Sam, because Ursula von der Leyen has tweeted in the last couple of minutes. There you go. This is what she said. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and I agreed to continue working in person towards shared practical solutions under the protocol on Ireland and Northern Ireland. I will therefore meet with the Prime Minister tomorrow in the UK. So, Sam, back to you. What will this revamped deal, what could it contain? Well... I think there are three big changes that Rishi Sunak's been able to negotiate. The first is to effectively make it easier to transfer, to transport goods from Great Britain to Northern Ireland without any of the kinds of checks that you've got at the moment. So at the moment, if you want to get stuff into Northern Ireland because of that lack of hard border and it obeying single market rules, you have to fill in forms, fill in permits, the requiters. This deal will do away with all of that. The second big thing that Rishi Sunak, I think, has secured is the right to determine things like certain taxes such as VAT and things like the levels of subsidy, state aid, as it's known in Whitehall, to determine both of those things uh, from Westminster. Uh, until now, Brussels had a say in that because they wanted to make sure that there wasn't unfair competition when it came to uh, when it came to the Republic of Ireland, the South, uh, and um, uh, uh, and make sure that there wasn't undue competitiveness uh, when it comes to uh, when it. <laughs> 
when it comes to uh, the North and the South. And then the third thing uh, that Rishi Sunak, uh, I think, uh, will be able uh, to say that he uh, secured concessions on, uh, really, I think, around uh, just um, around... Uh, the, the, the kind of, um, as I was saying, level playing field and um, uh, uh, and tax rates. And uh, uh, and I think between those different things, he will be able to go to Brexit. What he hasn't quite been able to do is to work out how you can stop that demand that Brexiteers say that they have and unionists have, which is to ensure uh, that effectively EU laws and new EU laws don't come in and apply to Northern Ireland. So the third part of the negotiation is the most complex, as it were. There'll be something, it might be called a Stormont Lock, that gives uh, MPs the ability, uh, in or, uh, uh, members of the, of the Stormont Assembly, the ability to, uh, as it were, delay new EU regulations when they uh, when they come into number 10, uh, when they come into Northern Ireland. Uh, but it won't be a veto. And I think that's the biggest problem here. So, yes, Yes, a big win on trading goods and removing checks. Yes, a big win on who controls tax rates. But when it comes to uh, effectively working out whether new EU laws need to apply uh, to goods in Northern Ireland and be applied to goods in Northern Ireland, that's that's going to be the really tricky and contentious bit. That's the thing that Marc Francois, uh, the head of the Brexit EU ERG, was on the telly uh, talking to Sophie Ridge this morning. So that's basically uh, their red line, kind of uh, making the situation better isn't good enough for them. Uh, what you really need to do is to ensure uh, that EU law no longer applies. New EU laws don't have to be um, uh, applied uh, in Northern Ireland. That's their red line. That won't be uh, granted. There's no suggestion that, that, that Rishi Sunak has won that fight, which is why perhaps explains why there's delay and delay, because at the point that uh, Rishi Sunak presses go on this deal, there's going to be an enormous fight. And if we're being honest, we don't know how big the fight is going to end up being. Are there just going to be 15 Tory MPs that go to the wall on this? Or is the contagion led by Boris Johnson and Liz Truss, Brexiteers, fueled by the DUP, the Democratic Unionists, are all of these people going to line up and condemn uh, Rishi Sunak's deal? Uh, that is potentially the case, in which case he's got a hell of a row uh, on his hands and there could be uh, really quite a backlash, making it quite hard, potentially even for him to govern with this uh, with this row uh, bleeding into other areas of government. So it's an absolutely critical point on, on one level. No surprise that effectively they've not come out with anything tonight, but it makes tomorrow look like a very, very big day. Indeed. Sam, just talk to us about the ERG. We saw Steve Baker tweeting a sign of the Westminster Tube. And then we've actually got pictures, I think, of him coming out with big thumbs up. So what role... Has he played, has the ERG played, and what do you think going forward they're going to be doing and thinking about all of this? So I'm just looking at Steve Baker's Twitter as we speak, and, yeah, it's just a picture of Westminster Tube sign. I mean, almost anything could be taken from that. Does it mean I'm out of here? Does it mean uh, time to sort of taxi for Baker uh, or, um, or, or what? Steve Baker is a vital, pivotal figure. He's inside the government. He's a minister in the Northern Ireland office. Many had expected him to be the sort of guarantor that this deal would work for the kind of hard Brexiteers that now are kicking off. But if he's unhappy, potentially might he resign? Uh, we don't know. I think that Rishi Sunak will have to, will have to be seen to be listening to Steve Baker very closely uh, because of the role that he plays now, but also the role he's played to put it bluntly, uh, defenestrating past prime ministers, not least Theresa May. Uh, so you listen, you ignore Steve Baker in a peril.